Hey guys, in this video we will start inserting some records into our database tables. And today our database table of choice is students. So we are going to create a few student records and we look at using an SQL script to do so as well as how we can use the editor to accomplish this task. Now there are a few things you have to do before you can just start writing your script. And one of them is to select the database that we're about to use or target for our script. So once again, to select that database, we have to use the use keyword and we specify the database by name. So in this case, we want school. And then we go about creating our script. Now the keywords involved in entering a record or inserting a record are literally, they're, they're standard English really and truly. So we have insert, and then we say into, and then we're expected to say what database table and then what columns we're inserting into. So do recall when we created our table, we created it with a few columns and we can always just drill down on the in the object explorer and expand columns and see and refresh yourself. And you can say insert into and the table name is students. And sometimes you'll actually see people write out the entire name dbo.students. So dbo is just a keyword that is within the context of Microsoft SQL Server. And it, it sits in front of most tables. So even if you didn't put it there, chances are you will see it appearing there at the default settings. All right, so you can always just say insert into, but I'll leave off the dbo for now. And the table name, and then you open a parenthesis. Sorry, you don't need to space it there and close. And then in these parentheses, you actually specify what columns you are going to be entering data into. Now, this is important because remember when we were configuring our tables, we set up one of the columns, which we call the ID to be a primary key and auto incrementing. That means when we're inserting a record, we don't have to put anything in here. We have to specify other columns like last name, first name, date of birth and enrollment date. And what we cannot put or shouldn't be attempting to put anything here. So we need to specify. Also, do recall that one of these was allowed to be null, which was enrollment date. So I can just hover over and you would see, or I can just expand ex Object Explorer, and you see here last name, not null, first name, not null, date of birth, not null, but enrollment date could be null, which means I could specify up to three columns. I don't have to specify all four of these. So I'm just showing you that this is why we specify the columns because not every record may get every bit of data. Of course, if the data point is not nullable, then it will not execute the script because I can't be putting in a student record. I can't be inserting something into the student's table without one of these mandatory uh, data points. All right, so let's work through this. So the first one is last name. And I know some people don't like to type, so you can actually just drag and drop. And then you'll see that the SQL editor is actually putting these square brackets. So that's also a feature that you would notice when SQL um, Management Studio generates some of the SQL for you. They usually put these in square brackets. And as we go on, I'll explain what those square brackets are for. So we can just mix and match and we just drag and drop across. And I'll fill this entire record with all the data points. So we're inserting a new, we're inserting into the student's table, uh, into the columns, last name, first name, date of birth, enrollment date. And then you see that the red line is there. So that means the script is still not quite finished because we need to specify what values will go into each column. So we have to say values, and I'll just break the line and bring that down. And then we open and close parentheses again. In these parentheses, we have to make sure that the values that we insert here line up with the columns that were ordered here. So the first value has to be 
the last name. And sorry, in SQL, I find it easier to just use the single quotes for a string, all right? I use double quotes and that was an accident. Use single quotation marks when using SQL, Microsoft SQL at least. So last name, and I will insert Reynolds, first name. So Reynolds lines up with last name. The next value should line up with first name, uh, McGee. Date of birth. The date time format that is default in SQL Server is year, month, day. And that comes in the YYYY-MM-DD. If you're familiar with Excel, then you're familiar with these date formats. If not, that's fine. When entering a date in SQL into a column that is a date time or even date, once it's a date type, the Expected format should be the year. So we're in the year, well, this person was born in 1988, the first month and the 15th day. So once again, that's year, month, day. That is the expectation. And for enrollment date, we will enter 2019-05-01. Dash dash so that is the 1st of May, 2019. And then we can review this and ensure that all the values are correct and correctly lined up. Once again, these values have to correspond with the order that the columns appear in. And then we can go ahead and execute. And once we execute, we know it is successful when it tells us one row affected. That means whatever it is we did, a row was somehow affected, whether it was created. Um, in other examples, you'll see where we can manipulate the data otherwise. So this is an indicator that the script was successful in manipulating that row. So let us try and insert another record. So let's write the script again from scratch. So once again, we say insert into, and then we choose a table name, students. And then we open and close parentheses, and then we list out the columns. So I'm going to mix up the order of the columns a bit. I'm going to say first name first, then last name, then date of birth. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do enrollment date. So I want you to see the errors that you would get when you don't follow the, the rules that you've set for the columns. So values, and then in the values listing, we have to make sure that firstly, we have the first name. We can say Jody McIntosh. And these are purely fictional names and enrollment date, I'll just say null, all right? Because we can pass in a null value. And then I'm going to execute this. The expectation is that we should get an error because we did say that date of birth is mandatory, yet we're here trying to insert a new student without a date of birth value. So if I say execute, then we see cannot insert value null into that column. So we do get an error message fails. So we know we need to rectify our script to reflect our rules. So I have to say date of birth and I have to add a value. So 1994, the third month, the eighth day, year, month, day. And then we execute and then we'll see, voila, one row affected. Let us make one more adjustment to this type of script. So I'm just going to, instead of taking everything out, I'm just going to erase the values. And I'm also not going to insert the enrollment date. So first name, last name, date of birth. Do recall that enrollment date is nullable, so it is not a mandatory field. So this time we want Trisha Williamson. And her date of birth is 
the year 1995, the eighth month, seventh day. And then we click execute and there you have it. So this record went into the database without any enrollment date. So to this point, we would have at least three records in our database. Now you're probably thinking this is tedious. Every time I have somebody to insert, I'm going to have to erase or you know rearrange or something. But then there is a way to actually do a multiple insert using one insert into statement. And that's what we're about to do. So when we're going to be inserting multiple records, in one statement, what we do is we maintain this first line, the insert into table name, and then we spell out all of the columns. And let's just say all of these next two records have an enrollment date. So what we do is write the first one, test, and I'm just going to get very shorthanded now, student, and this person was born 2001 ninth month eighth day and you can't leave out your dashes that don't use slashes it may be forgiving sometimes when you mix up your date formats but ultimately that's the date format it expects so you can just stick to that and the enrollment date is null now when i want multiple records in one statement what i'll do is just write comma and then go to the next line and write another one of these so i'm just going to take this line and copy and paste and this person is tests test one student one and i'll leave the same date of birth or let me just change it so that we can see the difference in the data and then as many records as you have you just write a comma and you can just duplicate that line and what i just did to duplicate is another keyboard shortcut i held down on control and C and V, which is copy and paste, but then without highlighting the line, it just duplicates whatever line the cursor is on. So that's another neat trick that you can try out. So I can just control C, V and put in as many as possible, right? Each one comma separated up until the very last one in the series. And of course the editor will make no mistake in pointing it out to you that this is invalid. So I'm just going to go ahead and fix up these records a bit and we will then see how this works. All right, so I've made some adjustments to this script. Uh, we are inserting into the table and I just put some differences in the data so that we can move ahead and not be confused as to any repeating data so that you can see where each record is unique in its own right. And I left some of the enrollment data as null, put in some, and I'm just showing you that as many records as you have, you can use this. Just use that technique and string them along. And then we will execute one time. And then we can see that we move from the usual one row affected to seven rows affected because we inserted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven new students. So as many records as you put in, once it does not fail, you will see a message like this indicating that you have done something right. Now, I know that we've been inserting, 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 and you're probably wondering, you know, is this a con? I'm not seeing the data. I'm just seeing a sentence that says rows affected. I want to see the data and that's fine. Uh, we do have another video coming up where we start extracting data. Uh, but then until then, I'm going to show you a very quick way to view the data and also how we use the editor to replicate this kind of functionality. So I've added some comments to this script and I'm going to show you how we can save a script file. So you've written a script like this, maybe you were tasked with writing the script to actually put in all the student records and then you have to submit it to your database administrator or whoever is going to actually pull the trigger and you need to have this file exportable. You can actually just save the file uh, control S or go to file and click save. And then that will prompt you as to where you want to put the file. So I'm just going to put this one on the desktop and I'll say insert students. And the default file extension for any SQL file is .sql. So I can just save that. And then you will be able to come back or open this and execute it on another computer or in another setting where you have a school database, a database named school, and all of the data needs to go into those tables.
So that is how you go about exporting your scripts and saving them for future reference. Maybe you're working on it and you need it for later. This is how it's done.